There's a couple that host the house concert series in Belvedere, New Jersey, who, uh, after coming to see us in various configurations with Craig and with JD, uh, showed up at a, at a show one night with t-shirts that they had had made up. And they had the word, and you might have seen pictures of me, or you may have seen me wear this shirt before, but it has the word rehearsals in white on a black t-shirt with a big red circle and a slash <laughs> through it. And then up here in the pocket area, it says League of Extraordinary Sidemen, Tom Hampton and Tommy Geddes. I thought it was a cool scene. <laughs> and um, there's, there's, there's not a complete element of truth to that because we do rehearse on occasion. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, uh, what, who said that? <laughs> when you spin a key artist one for her. Well, when, you know, when there's something coming up and when there's new material, you know, you need to actually learn how to play it. But uh, we learn a lot of stuff um, on the fly. And, you know, one of the, the great things about playing with JD is we've gone out and done these shows, you know, like the one that he was talking about when Tommy came out and sat in a stalker position like, right across from my contact. Like, no, I didn't. <laughs> I was very respectful. <laughs> but, you know, you, you do get to the point where you learn to play, you know, especially for sessions and things like that. You learn to rely on your intuition and you learn, you know, especially after you get to know somebody musically, you know, you start to anticipate their next move and, and things of that nature. And it makes rehearsals redundant sometimes. And the other great thing about not rehearsing, you know, on a religious level is that every now and again you play something that you didn't realize you knew how to play. And it's like, oh, man. That didn't suck. That was cool. <laughs> but um, you know, JD is a songwriter, and and when I first met JD, he was he was already writing his own songs, and the stuff that he's written in the time since I've known him has just always been on this you know continuing you know evolving level of excellence. He's one of my favorite songwriters, and you know he writes stuff that um, you know was all over the spectrum. Like he'll write "She Likes" and then he'll write a song like this, which you know. Everybody in this room has, has had the thoughts that uh, that JD writes about in this song, myself included, and uh, that's one of the great things about you know hearing something that one of these guys brings in is that it connects on a universal level, and that's certainly true of this song. And that's why I recorded it. It's called Window Painted Blue. Mm -hmm. Christmas, but I'm still 
I'm very sad you're leaving, brother. I am. But we've talked about it, and uh, I don't know. I feel like the best is yet to come for me and Tom. So uh, we've talked about it, and he's not, you know, it's, it, the world is large, but it's, it's small, too, you know? I've been trying to tell everybody that. <laughs> I'm trying to tell everybody.